Beaver Creek family, God has been so good to us. We are all together again in his courts so we can worship him. Today is a high day for three reasons. One, today is the Sabbath, and it is also 13th Sabbath. We had such a wonderful Sabbath school program this morning. And also for the third reason, today is communion. So it is indeed a high day. Let us lift our voices together as we sing praises to our Creator and our King. Let us start with hymn 383, O Day of Rest and Gladness. O day of rest and gladness, O day of joy and light, O balm of care and sadness, most beautiful, most bright, on thee the high and lowly, who bend before the throne, sing This is a day of rest and gladness. That's what we studied all quarter, rest. So let us turn our hymns, our hymnals to hymn 334. Come thou fount of every blessing. Songs of loudest praise. 
prayer this morning. Let us stand together as we sing our theme song. Sabbath, you may be seated. Praise God for his grace and for his tender mercy. We are alive and we are in the house of God. You know, uh, the year is going by so quickly. And uh, when every time we, uh, you know, somebody said to me, actually it was Miguel, he said he thinks time goes faster <laughs> here, here in Ohio. You know, when you're working and you're at the Lord's work or whatever it is that you're doing that's occupying you, you know, time just goes by. Time just goes by. But you know what that actually means? It means we're that much closer to the return of our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. And by his grace, let us continue to do what we can, how we can, where we can, and when we can to make sure that we are ready for his coming. Just want to remind you of a few things and also a couple changes. Uh, uh, our Children's Day program, first of all, uh, that has, we have postponed that down to October 16, October 16, and you're going to be hearing some more about that uh, in just a few, but October 16, there is a change uh, for that particular program, but uh, speaking of children, there is a reason to be happy, amen? There's a reason to be happy, and uh, we just want to uh, be happy with the Mayol family, uh, Elizabeth, Ajak, and John, why? Because of baby Seth. Uh, if you've been watching the uh, emails or if you've been getting the uh, updates, you would have already seen uh, the picture on the right. Uh, Seth, uh, quite a big baby, nine pounds, nine ounces, amen. And uh, he's, he's well, he's at home. Uh, you heard that he was in a NICU for some time, but he's well and he, he's home, and we praise God. We're happy for this family. Of course, uh, you know that uh, Elizabeth just recently transferred her membership uh, here to Beaver Creek, and uh, we just pray that uh, they will continue uh, in the grace of God as they celebrate the arrival of, of Seth. You know, uh, Ajak, he has been, man, I'm just dying to be a big brother, and he finally got that wish, amen? So continue to keep that family in prayer. And uh, I, I want to uh, bring this to your attention, our church business meeting, uh, that has been pushed back a week to October 4 at 7 p.m., October 4 at 7 p.m. Uh, and at this business meeting, all right, uh, in addition to getting a, f a financial updates uh, and uh, other things in the life of the church, we are going to begin to put in motion uh, the nominating process uh, for the upcoming year 2022 uh, to 2023, all right? So uh, please keep that in mind and uh, be in prayer about that uh, as we get ready for that uh, particularly important business meeting. Uh, October 4 at 7 p.m., all right? And uh, uh, we continue to pray about, and this is one of the things that we'll be uh, uh, focusing on uh, even in that uh, business meeting, not the particulars per se, but where we are in terms of our fundraising, all right, for our uh, church building. You know, 
we could see it or, or in over the weeks. Of course, today we're a few in number. A lot of things are going on in town, and people are serving elsewhere right now. Some are playing in the band uh, or a choir, I believe it is, uh, at other churches. Some are out of town. Uh, but the Lord continues to bless, and uh, the, the family continues to grow. But not only that, we have need for functional space, not just on Sabbath, but also during the week, especially when the, if the weather uh, gets inclement and, uh, you know, as our uh, Adventure Club grows and our Pathfinder Club. How many do we have in, in Adventures this year? 23 kids. Wow. Wow. And they need some good functional space. I know they're putting dividers down the, uh, the fellowship hall and stuff like that. And uh, we want to make sure that we're better able to serve uh, our church family. So continue to press together as God Im impresses you uh, to, to give. It's not about equal giving, but equal sacrifice. And speaking of families, yes, we continue to pray for the Anders. Amen. That's right, Justin. I wish y'all could see that, but y'all can't see that. That's an excited daddy right there. Amen. Love it. Awesome. Uh, so uh, pray for uh, Justin and Cherie uh, as they await the arrival of, of, of Aria. But uh, we will be uh, 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 celebrating uh, uh, with them uh, through the shower tomorrow. All right, uh, those of you who will be there, you already know, know all that. But keep that in prayer, all right? And uh, you can see from that, that, that nice color paint exactly what they're expecting. So we're, we're praying for you guys. And uh, we lo we're looking forward to uh, uh, celebrating a little bit uh, tomorrow, all right? And remember, dads, 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 Justin needs some support. Amen? Amen? Uh, would, wouldn't you agree with that, Cherie? Yeah? Yeah? We want to make sure dads stand right next to, to Justin, right? Don't leave him on his own. All right, and uh, we have a couple of membership uh, transfers. Actually, we have quite a few. Uh, so we got a first reading, uh, and I'll ask our clerk to come on up and uh, give us that uh, first reading. Uh, all, all of them. Even the one that was just recent yes. this week. Yes. All right. <laughs> all right, so this is really a first reading. I couldn't remember all of this. We have four to read today. Uh, top on the list is Miguel Harris who has requested. Wait, wait, wait. Do, do we want to read this? Do we really want to read, you know, or do you want to skip, skip the one? No, that? we are going to read Okay, this all right, one. all right, all right. Good, awesome. <laughs> all right, he has requested his transfer um, of membership to Beaver Creek from the Bridgeport Spanish Seventh-day Adventist Church in Bridgeport, Connecticut. All right, and then we have three Great Advent Movement, who are requesting transfers out of Beaver Creek. One is Elizabeth Santiago, who is now in Napa, California, and so she's requesting a transfer from Beaver Creek to the Napa Community Seventh-day Adventist Church. And then we have Ida May and Keith Jenkins, who are requesting their membership transfer from Beaver Creek to the Ethan Temple Seventh-day Adventist Church in Clayton, Ohio. All right, so we have uh, the first reading, and next week we'll have a second reading, uh, and then uh, we can vote uh, these actions, all right? So thank you so much, church, and uh, may God bless you today as, indeed, it is a high Sabbath as we celebrate what Jesus has done for us. This time I'll ask our elders to give us our scriptural call to worship. Happy Sabbath, church. Our scriptural call to worship uh, can be found in 2 Corinthians uh, 1, 3, and 4. And it reads, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves we receive from God. And uh, as our pianist plays our prelude, uh, just like us to all reflect on God's goodness. The fact that we're here today, God is good. He woke us up this morning. Some, some didn't wake up. So just reflect on God's goodness. He got us through this, this week, and we're here to rest in him uh, this Sabbath day. <laughs>
let us turn our hymnals to hymn 516, All the Way, My Savior Leads Me. Good morning, church. Good to see everybody here. Um, today's tithes and offer offerings come from Leviticus, and while I was looking up Levit Leviticus, the internet, of course, comes up with all kinds of little nuggets, and this what I kind of thought was interesting, just some, some facts about why we tithe. Um, number one, it all belongs to the Lord, remembering that the Lord, that your God gives you the power to gain the wealth. Uh, number two, it keeps us from being selfish. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Number three, it empowers our church. Go th therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Um, number four, it puts us in a place of blessing. Give and it will be given to you in good measure. For with the measure in which you use it will be measured back to you. And that God will ultimately supply all of our needs. And lastly, it challenges us to live by faith, as without faith it is impossible to please God. Since the one who draws near to him believes that he exists, with that faith he will reward those who seek him. With that, I will read today's scripture for our tithes and offerings that comes from Leviticus uh, 27, 30 through 34. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the sand seed of the land or that the fruit of the tree is the Lord's and it is holy to the Lord. If a man wants at all to redeem any of his tithes, he shall add a fifth to it. And concerning the tithe of the herd of the flock or whatever passes under the rod, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. He shall not inquire, 
inquire whether it is good or bad, nor shall he exchange it at all. Then both it and the one exchanged for it will be holy. It shall not be redeemed. And these are the commandments which the Lord commanded to Moses for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. Um, they'll be collecting offering today. Um, those that view it at home, they can go online giving. Um, if the deacons could please stand while we offer a blessing over what we are to receive. Dear Lord, thank you for the instructions you have left for us when it comes to giving. What is ultimately yours, we give back to you in which to fulfill your will. Please bless us with what we collect in your name to honor you. Father, we love you in your name. We pray, amen. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Now it's that time where we cast all our cares upon him because he cared for us. Amen, church? Pastor? Yes, sir. I wanted to uh, get the ball rolling this morning. Uh, I have a praise. Okay. Uh, I have a praise this morning. I want to thank the Lord for uh, journeying mercies for, you probably heard that amen or you probably didn't, but, uh, and you, you have to allow me to say from my baby sister, uh, yeah, she, she's approaching 40, but you know, still my baby <laughs> sister, amen. Uh, and I didn't ask permission to say that, I didn't need permission. <laughs> but uh, for uh, my sister and her family, uh, her dear hu husband, Andrew, and their son, Nathan. Uh, I know that uh, most, if not all of you, would recognize that face and that voice when you see her uh, up here, because she's been here. She's a part of the Beaver Creek family. Amen, somebody? Amen. 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 Uh, but you're getting the opportunity today to meet Andrew and Nathan. So I want to thank God for his grace, for bringing them here. Uh, they're with us uh, for a while, and uh, we've already begun to uh, uh, enjoy their presence and some good food. Amen, somebody? <laughs> I mean, the food is always good uh, at the Gordon House, but it's a different flavor, you know, when, uh, when your sister comes and, and her husband and they put their team for their teamwork and they, you know, make those good old dumplings that you're used to. Amen, somebody? Amen, All right. Amen. So I just praise God for journey mercies. Uh, and I just also want to ask a prayer um, for uh, the Thompson family, Dr. Sterling and, his, and his, uh, uh, his family. You know, he recently lost his brother, but he also asked uh, for prayer for uh, his sister-in-law, um, and, uh, and another family member. And you know, God has already begun to answer uh, that, that prayer request for recovery uh, from COVID for, for them, uh, but Amen. continue to keep them in prayer. All right? Amen. Amen. Justin? Amen. So, Justin is, is, is a praise. For his wife's job, I forgot your name. What's your name again? Sherry. Sherry. Sherry, that everything worked out with the job. 
And she got her job and everything back, and praise the Lord. Anyone else? And what's your name, young man? You you eat you eat see you read you read see. Pray for you read see, and um, she's sick. You said, oh okay. Okay. Anyone else? Betty. Do you know his name? Uh, Scott. Scott. So a church member, um, Betty Klein, her nephew Scott got hit by a car, and he's on the ventilator. We're praying for recovery, for his healing. We know that we serve a God in spite of how grim it may look. We know that he can fix it. Anyone else? Okay. Job opportunity. Okay. Amen. I'm going to say Joe's wife, but that's not right. So what's your name again? <laughs> Jeanette. Jeanette. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm getting old. Believe it or not, I forget names and all of these things. So Jeanette, she, um, she's praying, um, she's praising for her new job. Unfortunately, her, her co-workers are leaving uh, not good, but praise the Lord oh, <laughs> that she got her new job. Okay, anyone else? Last one. My brother-in-law, Monty, has lung cancer. Oh. Okay. So we are praying for Monty recovery. He has um, bone cancer, you said? and for his healing. So church, as we turn to her, our song, or theme song, I cast all my care. Let us kneel as much as possible as we take our praise as well as our concerns to him in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, it is with gratitude and praise why we are here on the day that you have set aside for our rest. For some, this week has been crowded by medical issues, cares, 
of this world, of this world for others. Yet we are here to worship you, Lord. Thank you for leading us safely through another week. It would be easy for us to focus on our needs. They are plenty. Notwithstanding, when we look at how you have blessed us, our cup run it over. Father, please quiet our minds and still our hearts. The noise of the world seem to drown out your still small voice. You gave man the knowledge to create devices to connect and open the world and touch by the touch of the finger. Would you please help us to reflect on your glory and guide us into your peace during this time? As we journey to the promised land, the going is rough and the hills are hard to climb. We see on the news the debt and destruction. People hearts are failing them for fear. Fear of whom to listen or trust or what the cure is as we navigate through this world of woe. Father, help us not to spread or tune our ears to conspiracy. Instead, help us use these opportunities to spread truth and give hope. You told us not to panic when we see these things, but to look up because our redemption draw it nigh. Today, as we come to you, be it in person or online, we come asking for your healing power. We come asking for your care, as you always have, your thanksgiving. Lord, I pray for my wife, Jillian, who is sick. Continue to touch her body. Continue to give her hope. We pray for the pastor's sister and her family, Andrew, and and um, her son and his son continue to be with them, Lord, as they transition here, help that they have a wonderful time. We have been blessed by them. We pray for Dr. Sterling and the loss of a loved one. We pray for his sister-in-law continue to be with them as they continue to recover also from COVID. Lord, we pray for the young man who had requests prayer for his um, cousin, I believe, sick. Lord, touch her, Lord. We pray for Betty Klein and the bad news of Scott as he was walking, Lord, minding his own business, and there is a car that hit him. Now he's on the ventilator. Lord, please touch his body. Lord, you have done so many things, miraculous things. At this time, we need for you to please make him whole. Lord, we pray for the job opportunities. We pray for um, Jenny, um, new job. We pray as um, she gets into that role, and also her co-workers, we pray for them as well. Lord, we pray for Monte and, and the issue of bone cancer, Lord. Any type of cancer is bad, Lord. But Lord, touch his body and make him whole. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us as a church and our family. So Father, as you are invited to dwell in each of our hearts through your Holy Spirit, equip us, challenge us, comfort us, teach us. Anoint your man's servant, Pastor Gordon, with a special anointing to feed your flock. 
as we part in this, as we take part in this unique life-saving service, communion, please help us to think about what you have done for us by sending your only begotten Son to set us free from the bonds of hell, giving us life and life more abundantly. His broken body made us whole, and his blood that was spilled made us clean. All these things we pray in no other name but Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Hello, church. Our uh, children's story will be brought to us uh, via a video from Grace Link. So tune in and enjoy. everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called A Long, Long Walk. The, the memory verse is from Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. It says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here am I. Send me. Today's message is I will listen when God calls me to serve him. I don't want to move, Mika groaned. Neither do I, Anya replied. Dad said he felt the Lord wanted him to take the new job. I wonder how he knows what God wants. Let's ask him, Mika suggested. Dad, we need to ask you something, Anya whispered, tugging at Dad's shirt. How can you be sure God wants us to move? That's probably the same question someone asked Abraham when God told him to move, Dad said. Let me tell you a story. Abram loved God. He, he talked, talked with God, God often during the day. day. He, he wanted, wanted to do whatever God said. One day, God spoke to Abram. It, it is time for you to leave Ur, Abram. You, you must leave all your friends and go to a place that I will show you. Abram must have been speechless. Why would God want him to leave his home and go someplace else to live? God continued, I will bless you, Abram. I will give you children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Your family will grow into a mighty nation. You will be greatly blessed. Now that must have made Abram wonder, for he and his wife Sarai did not have even one child. Nevertheless, Abram and Sarai chose to obey God. They, they packed, packed up all their belongings. Abram's servants folded and packed all the tents. The time had come to leave. Abram called together all those who would go with them. Lot, Abram's nephew, joined the group. All the people who worked in Abram's house and the people Abram had taught to worship God also got ready to go. They loaded their donkeys and camels and began their long journey. Abram, Sarai, their family members, and their servants walked the dusty road day after day. The sun was so hot. But through it all, God provided for them. Finally, the caravan reached the land of Canaan. But, but still, Abram and Sarai, their people, their donkeys, and their camels traveled on. When would they stop? Where was God leading them? 
in Shechem, a place where many Canaanites lived, there was a forest of trees called the Great Trees of Morah. When Abram reached the forest of Morah, he called to his servants, Halt! Set up the camp here! As the servants prepared the camp, God appeared and spoke to Abram. Look around you, Abram, God said. This is the land that I am going to give you and your family. Abram looked around. He saw a wide, grassy valley with softly rolling hills. He saw olive trees, fig trees, and springs of cool water everywhere. But Abram also saw something that made him very sad. Among the trees, he saw altars that were used to worship idols. Abram immediately gathered stones to build an altar. He wanted to worship God and thank Him for being with them during their journey. He wanted to tell God that he was willing to go anywhere God wanted. He was willing to do whatever God asked him to do. And, and so, Dad, Dad told Anya, Anya and Mika, we need to be willing to listen to God, just as Abram was. God spoke words directly to Abram. Today, he may speak to us directly, through his word, the Bible, or through the counsel of people who are following him. Your mother and I are glad to serve where God sends us. And, and when, when we, we are willing, willing God, God lets, lets us know what He wants. He, he gives us understanding and helps us know in our hearts what He wants us to do. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Today's uh, scriptural reading is found in the first book of the Bible, in Genesis uh, chapter 15, and we're going to be reading uh, verses 7 through 11, and the verses 17 and 18. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he, he brought all these to him and cut them in two down the middle and placed each piece up, uh, opposite to each other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And verse 11, and when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Now the verse 17 and 18. And it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark, that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces. One, the same day, on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying, to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. May the Lord bless us if we hear and do his word. Amen. Amen. Recently, in our last Sabbath school lesson, we were focused on rest, rest in Christ. And uh, as it fell my lot to bring you this special music today in preparation for the sermon, this song kept coming over and over in my mind. Of course, it's uh, probably done this once or twice, singing before speaking. But I pray that uh, the link will be made. I'll be singing for you 312. And you can follow the words in the hymnal. I'll be seeing the first, second, and fourth stanza near the cross. But notice how the refrain ends. 
It says, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. I pray you're blessed. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream. Oh, from Calvary's mouth.
our hearts indeed find rest beyond the river. We live in a restless, reckless world. Many are searching for peace, searching for lasting hope. And they're searching, and many weary themselves to find it. But even though we do not live in the present reality of heaven, I pray like the Apostle Paul, you will set your minds on things above, and not on things below. You know, it's a false saying that some people say that those who are so heavenly minded, they're of no earthly good. You heard me right, it's a false saying. Because those who are truly heavenly minded will be of earthly good. As you focus your mind on heaven, you can point people to the land where we will rest from our sojourn. A long, long walk to a land that we have not yet seen. Just as with Abram, by the grace of God, we can see it with spiritual eyes. It's a land that has no churches. <laughs> Did you hear me? It's a land that has no hospitals. That's right, my brother. It's a land that has no morgues, have mercy. It's a land that has no rehab facilities. It's a land in which, by the grace of God, month to month and week to week, we shall gather together before the throne of God and we shall sing. We shall praise his name. and We shall eat the amazing fruit from the tree of life. Have mercy. Don't let me start listing those fruit now. I see you all smiling. Have mercy. Oh, those mangoes are going to be big. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And so with that, I pray we will turn our attention to the message for today, Broken Covenant Wages. If you permit me uh, just to uh, welcome the Butler family. It's so good to see you, Michael and Christine. It's, it's good to see you. Uh, let's see. How, how do I do this? Uh, uh, Feliz Sabado and Magandang Umaga Sabado. Yeah. All right. I didn't practice, but I, I, kinda, I think I got it in my head. Uh, Michael and I go way back, wow, time flies, over 14 years. Can you imagine that? God is good. Good to see you. Welcome to, to Beaver Creek. And I, I, I know that you'll find this place a beautiful place to be. So bow your heads with me as we pray. Father in heaven, we're here for a special occasion. the most sacred of occasions. Like others that you have given to us, like baptism, like marriage, this is sacred. And as we spend a few moments in your word, we ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will prepare our hearts. Prepare our hearts to receive this beautiful experience, Father. Beautiful not because we have gathered here and because of the setting, but because of what it represents. And I ask, Lord, that you will speak through me. Take my planning and preparation and present your message to your people. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Broken covenant wages. Broken covenant wages. If you go with me in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 15, thank you, Brother Daniel I. I gotta say Daniel I and Daniel B. <laughs> Brother Daniel for uh, reading our scripture reading today. Now begin at the top of Genesis 15. We're not uh, going through our regular, usual routine as we, you know, we have our handouts and your alliteration and all that. It's a little different today as we go through this brief homily in preparation for uh, the service. 
which is to follow. This is talking about God's covenant with Abram. You will remember that when God took Abraham, or Abram, I should say, because his name wasn't changed yet, to Abraham, when he took Abram from the land of Ur, of the Chaldees, you know that's Babylon, yes? He took him from this land of confusion. Uh, all of the things that were going on there was not a fit place for Abraham to be. It was not a fit place for someone who served God, who trusted in God, and who wanted to be guarded against all the pagan influences of that particular time. Of course, God took him out so that he would eventually be a blessing to all the world. I don't want you to miss that. Because God is not seeking uh, to practice what some would call exclusivism when he simply removes him from others who do not believe the way he did. No, 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 no. Abram was being set up by God. He was being prepared by God for a very, very special task, including reaching those from whom he had just left. So now we come after the time when Abram goes through Canaan and he, he rescues Lot and he, he, he uh, gives tithe to Melchizedek, we come to chapter 15. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid. You know, it's interesting that uh, uh, that's actually uh, one of the first instances where we find that phrase. Do not be afraid. In other words, fear not. As we talked about fear last week, I, I feel like I want to go back down that route, but I'll save that for next week when we continue our series says, do not be afraid, he says, I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go, what is that word? Childless. And the heir of my house is Eleazar, of Damascus. Interestingly, the name Eleazar means God is my help, but this was not the method through which God was going to help Abraham. He had another method. Eleazar was a very faithful servant, and indeed he would send him out on missions to even go and find a wife for Isaac. He would be a help in that way, but not in this particular way was Eleazar to be his help. And then Abram said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. Recognize, friends, it's okay to talk with God. It's okay to ask God for clarifications for things you don't understand. If you have questions, God has answers. The challenge is how we approach God. If we approach God to debate with him and to argue with him over things and and, you know, friends, we've got to be careful. You know, the, someone says you've got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. But he who approaches God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently seek him. So I believe that Abram, being who he was, a man who was faithful, a man who obeyed thus far to follow God, leaving his place of origin and, and going to a land that he would later see he was a faithful and a humble man, and he approached God with reverence. Verse 4, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said to them, So shall your descendants be. Just last night for worship at home, Jonathan read from a book, Indescribable, and he, he, he spoke in there. It talks of the millions and millions and millions and millions of stars, countless we can't number. They, they, the one that they particularly pointed out was, was, was Beetlejuice. 
Uh, it took me a while to remember, oh yeah, there is a star called Beetlejuice. <laughs> it's an actual star. It's named Beetlejuice and how big it is, how many times bigger than the earth and how far it is away. But yet, it looks like a mere speck. But think about our earth. <laughs> it's hundreds of times bigger than our earth. Have mercy, somebody. But of all of these billions of stars, Jesus said, who by faith I believe was the one who was speaking to Abraham. You can go through various comparisons of Bible scripture and you know when he says before Abraham I am, this was indeed actually Jesus speaking. He says, so shall your descendants be. Now stay with me, friends. Verse 6, and he believed. He what? This is a man who was aged. His wife would later reveal that the years of bearing are already gone. But yet Abraham, it says here, Abram believed God and it was accounted. It was credited to him. It was put on his account. It was imputed to him the righteousness of God. Sometimes people say, oh, you only find righteousness by faith in the New Testament. I'm like, which Bible are you reading? It's right here. Noah, he found grace. He was a man of faith. And here we find that Abram also exhibited that very same faith, a faith that is credited with righteousness. Now notice this. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldees to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to him, this is where our scripture reading was picking up. It says, bring me a three-year-old heifer. I got that portion there. I'll just read that part from the screen. It says, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, and a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Uh, one thing that is interesting that uh, you find those uh, even in, in, in agriculture or even commentators say uh, that these animals, when mentions three-year-old, 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 these were now adults. They were fully grown. And, and I want you to recognize that these here, when it comes to sacrifices, uh, talking about the, the, this, 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 uh, this cow and this goat, what you find is that when it comes to sacrifices, these things were very, very expensive. Hello? And uh, it was the wealthy or the rich that offered these sacrifices. When you begin to get to the turtle dove and the pigeons, uh, you begin to get to the poorer classes, even to flower. Have mercy. Now notice this. Then he brought all these to him and cut them in two down the middle and placed each piece opposite the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. These sacrifices, these things that were offered at great expense were slaughtered. Now, what is being said about this? Without the words or commentation from Scripture, what can we understand of what's going on here? We're coming to that in just a moment. But I want you to recognize that in verse 11 it says, And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Why was that included? You see, this was now dedicated to God and nothing, nothing was allowed to settle on that which was dedicated to God. These animals were now used for a sacrifice. I want you to notice what happens. I want you to notice what happens. Go with me very quickly to Jeremiah chapter 34. What book? Jeremiah chapter 34. And I'm going to begin at verse 18. I wanted to read this particular verse because this helps to fill in some gaps as to something that Abram himself did that very day. Okay? And what is meant by it. And we'll see how God responds when we get back to Genesis. Look at this. Uh, let me get it, verse 17. It says, therefore, are you there? Jeremiah 34, verse 17. Therefore, thus says the Lord, thou have not obeyed me in proclaiming liberty, 
everyone to his brother and everyone to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim liberty to you, says the Lord, to the sword, to pestilence, and to famine. And I will deliver you to trouble among all the kingdoms of the earth. Why will he do that? It says, and I will give the men who have transgressed my covenant. The title of our message is Broken Covenant Wages. Stay with me. It says, I will give the men who have transgressed my covenant, who have not performed the words of the covenant which they made before me, notice this, when they cut the calf in two and pass between the parts of it. Recognize that when a covenant was being entered into, and there was a special sacrifice of, of, of the calf, and they cut it down the middle, they would then walk in between these two pieces. Why? What were they saying? They were saying, listen, I will walk the path of death, and may it be to me what I have done to these if I do not keep my word. If I don't keep my word, may God strike me down and cut me in two. This is what they willingly, voluntarily, of their own volition agreed to. God, for, God forced no one. Of course, God gave the instruction to Abram. He said, get me the heifer. Get me uh, the goat. Get me the ram. And Abram knew what to do. He cut them in two. And then he did his part of the bargain. But notice... Notice something else that happens, my dear friends. Stay with me on this. Verse 17 and verse 18. Verse 17 and verse 18. Well, 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 well pause there for a second. I don't, wanna, I don't want you to think I'm simply skipping over the other verses because there's something important in there, but the main, main part is verse 17 and 18. Verse 12 says, Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. When the Bible says a deep sleep fell on Abraham, why do you think that sleep came about? What, he was taking melatonin? <laughs> he, he was tired? No. This was a God-induced sleep. God was now going to give him a vision. And behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them 400 years. I wish we had the time to, to dissect that. We did that in a series uh, some time back. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they will come out with great possessions. Now, as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age. Oh, compare that to Noah. That wasn't a good old age. But anyway, for the time it was. At 100 and, uh, I think, what, 75? Yes? A good old age. Nobody's living to that anymore. But no notice this. It says, now as for you, you should go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age. Verse 16, but in the fourth generation they shall return here, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. After God said this, something happened that gave Abram assurance. It's on the screen. And it came to pass. When the sun went down and it was dark, that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between the pieces. Stop. Don't read any further. Don't read any further. Stop. Okay, okay. Let me blank this out. What did we read in Jeremiah chapter 34, verse 18? When the fathers, those men of Israel, they promised themselves to God that they would be faithful to him, what did they do? They cut the calf in two and they walked between the pieces saying, if I don't keep my word, God, do this to me. Hebrews 12, 29 tells us that our God is a consuming fire. You put the pieces together. This burning oven that appeared, this torch of fire that appeared, this 
was a manifestation of the very presence of God. But what did God do? God walked. Oh, have mercy. God walked between the pieces. And in so doing, God said, if I don't keep my word, may this happen to me. If I don't keep my word, may this happen to me. But we know the Bible says that God cannot lie. God's word will not return unto him empty or void without accomplishing that for which he sent it. I don't need to remind you what Isaiah 53 verse 6 says. It says, all we like sheep have gone astray. Abram wasn't always faithful. He wasn't always faithful. Praise the Lord, he passed the ultimate test. There when it came to, to, to Isaac several years later. But Abram wasn't always faithful. We see what Abram has done. Even after this point. So you know what should have happened to Abram, right? <laughs> but you see, there is a thing called grace. God's riches at Christ's expense, G-R-A-C-E. It's a thing called grace that God will give you everything, even what he has promised in the covenant, and he will be the one to be cut in two. We're talking about the keeping of a covenant uh, 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 one of the uh, great commentaries on Scripture that uh, you read prayerfully, read it uh, uh, and compare Scripture to Scripture, is by a man called Matthew Henry. One of these things he's commenting, when, he, when he's commenting on this, he says, those who would accept God's promises would not excuse themselves from God's ordinances. Oh, have mercy. Did you get that? The Bible says he was bruised for our iniquities, right? The chastisement that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Recognize that God, even though he kept his end of the bargain of this covenant, he allowed himself to be broken. He allowed himself to die. He allowed himself to take the penalty of our broken covenant. Broken covenant wages is right there in scripture. It says the wages of sin is what? Death. But God cannot die. God is a source of life. So what does God do? The Bible says, and the word, the word of God, John 1 verse 14, became what, everyone? Flesh. Why? He was born to die. He was going to keep the covenant. But, but, but he says, you know what? You broke my covenant, and if you die, you can't live to tell the tale, so I'm going to die for you. Commentary says, those who would accept God's promises would not miss out on his ordinances. Patriots and Prophets, page 137, says this, As a pledge of his covenant of God with men, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp, symbols of the divine presence. When Elijah Elijah offered that sacrifice. What happened? Fire came down from God out of heaven and consumed the sacrifice, yes? When the three Hebrew boys were in Nebuchadnezzar's fire, the God of fire came down with them and they were able to stand through that fire. You see, that which is holy is not consumed and they were blameless. They had the presence of God and the Bible tells us that it's you and me. That's going to be in the presence of God forever. In the presence of the burning flames. Have mercy, somebody. You see, that's where Satan was. 
He walked in the midst of the fiery stones as Lucifer, the one who carried the light, Lucifer. And he doesn't want you to get where he was. And so he's twisted the script, telling people that uh, 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 God is going to burn you forever. No, 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 no. That same fire that consumes the sacrifice is the very same fire of God's presence that you and I will live in forever. You don't believe me? Go read Psalm 15. Go read Isaiah 33. Go read Isaiah 43. All of these promises put together, it tells us, who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burnings? They that have clean hands and a pure heart. He said, I don't have a clean hand and a pure heart, Lord. That's why we go to him and receive washing and renewal. And he cleans us up and says, even though you've broken the covenant, you won't have to die the death of sin. I have died that for you. These symbols of the divine presence passed between the severed victims, totally consuming them. And again, a voice was heard by Abram confirming the gift of the land of Canaan to his descendants. Friends, we are going to inherit that land. Not the land that's being fought over today. Have mercy, somebody. Oh, have mercy. Y'all missed that. We're going to inherit a new land. The earth made new, the heavenly Canaan. Amen? He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised because of the broken covenant, and he accepted the wages. And so when we symbolically drink of the cup that Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, when we take of his broken body, we do that because we have entered into a covenant with him. How do we enter into that covenant? We enter into that covenant through baptism. When we are baptized, we enter into a covenant with God. I give you my life. I die, I'm buried, and I'm resurrected by your grace to walk in newness of life. This is you accepting the covenant that Jesus has, has offered to us. And how do we renew that covenant? Every time we have this special service, it's a renewal of a covenant that you have already willingly entered into. It's not a secret covenant. It's a public covenant. And so, I know that today, those in the sounding of my voice, those who may be watching later on or may be watching online right now, you are looking forward to that day when you will enter into this covenant. Your heart is being prepared and your heart is ready to say, Lord, I want to enter into this covenant. Show me your word. Say, well, this is what the covenant is all about. You see, you don't enter into a covenant blindly. <laughs> oh, have mercy, somebody. You got to know what the conditions are. You got to know what you are agreeing to. This is not some willy-nilly thing. This, this is not some uh, love at first sight type of thing. Oh, no. We see what we're getting into. We're giving up the ways of the world, giving up those things that easily beset us. Sometimes even after we enter in, we trip and fall. <laughs> now is a good time to say, if you can't say amen, say ouch. But he gives us this. That just in case you fall. Yes, you run boldly to the throne of grace. You can go to him in prayer. You don't have to wait for this. But this is a renewal of the covenant. You can't renew what you haven't yet started. So those who are looking forward to it, prayerfully prepare your heart. Study God's word and see what this covenant is all about. Because he says, I've asked you to obey my word. Enter into that covenant with me. And so for those who have already entered into that covenant with baptism, when Jesus was there with his disciples on the, on the, in the upper room, 
he began to wash their feet. Peter said, listen, you're never going to wash my feet. He said, oh, yeah? If I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. He said, oh, well, 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 don't wash just my feet. Wash everything. Wash my head. And he says, he who is already washed need only wash their feet. He who is already washed. He who has been baptized need only wash their feet. And so that's why we follow our Lord's example. If you've not yet been washed, by the grace of God, you continue to look forward to that time so that you can celebrate a renewal of the covenant with him. But remember, my friends, it's a preparation. It's a preparation. And so we look forward to that time. And so that's why we wash before we receive the emblems. We'll do that today in this ordinance of humility. Why is it called the ordinance of humility? See, only the servants would wash the feet of others. And if we are to be like Christ, then we are also to be servants. It might seem meaningless to us today because we got socks and shoes and all that type of stuff and everything, you know, we got pedicures and all that type of thing. And that's good. Say, well, I've probably done some that didn't look that way. But that's beside the point. This was what Jesus gave as the example. Example of submitting. Not merely to one another, but to him. So we follow his example. And in John 13, 5 and 15, it says, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet. I have given you an example. That's, that's exactly how it's written there with the, with the word and. In the old English, an example that you should do as I have done to you. Now, we also live in the uh, present reality of, of the pandemic. But God's word is not to be undone. And so, uh, as we have done since we, we started communion over a year ago, for those of us who are here, uh, family members can get together in groups and experience, have this experience together, or housemates or close friends. We leave that to your determination. But Enjoy this experience. I say enjoy because you are looking forward to something bigger and better. And we'll be singing hymn 567. Hymn 567. Uh, all rooms are available with seating for foot washing among couples, families, housemates, close friends. Uh, particularly the, the fellowship hall, uh, the junior room, and the critical room. Okay. Uh, if you say I have no friends, no, no, no close uh, family members here, no worries. One of our leaders would volunteer to wash your feet. Uh, if you're a single lady, there'll be someone to help you. If you're a single male, there'll be someone to help you. And even if we wash more than one, Jesus washed all of those feet. But we'll sing hymn 567. We'll sing... Uh, all the stanzas, and on the last stanza, we will then leave. If, if you're not participating today, but you want to stay for the blessing and the fellowship of the service, there will be uh, some songs that keep the very reverence of the atmosphere right now playing on the screen, and those will also be in the rooms. You can listen. But by the grace of God, let us keep the atmosphere of worship and reverence. It's not a time to talk about the game, what you did this week. The time to focus on what Jesus has done for us. Amen? So hymn 5, 6, 7. Have thine own way, Lord.
So at this time, those of us who are, uh, will be in the, uh, those rooms, uh, and for about the next 15 minutes or so, there will be music playing here, videos will be playing in the other rooms as well, and uh, may your hearts be blessed as we continue through the service today.
this song, the title. In Espanol says, Le Via Dolorosa. Le Via Dolorosa. The way of suffering. It was that Friday as he walked slowly, slowly, slowly towards Golgotha's hill. As he was now prepared to accept the wages of the broken covenant. It's not the covenant that he broke. He made the covenant and he accepted the covenant and he kept his end of the bargain. But yet, he was the one paying the price for the broken covenant. <coughs> Friends, that's not fair. Hello, somebody? That's not fair. He didn't break his end of the bargain. Why is he paying the price? That's not fair, but it's grace. It's not fair, but it's love. It's not fair, but that's what it means to be godlike. That's the meaning of forgiveness. Forgiveness isn't offered because the one who broke their end of the bargain was able to pay back for what they broke. If they were able to pay it back, then no forgiveness would be necessary. And that's why we offer forgiveness. Because we have freely received, and so we also freely give. We're not able to give if we have not first received it into our own hearts. I know what it's like to feel when it's hard to forgive. Let me tell you, I knew how to hold out. But when, and this happened several years ago, and I, I told you this before, it happens in, I lived my life in AJ and BJ years, right? Before Jonathan and after Jonathan. Something about that child, as the Lord is calling me into ministry, broke me. There are a lot of things I had to let go. Whatever your experience is, even if you haven't yet had it, God has one for you. You might have to go back and reflect. And I'm not talking about infirmities or disease or anything like that. But there may be an experience that you go through that will remind you of what God did for you and why you should freely give to others. And today, this celebration, it's solemn. It's quiet because of what that day represented. Listen, there is going to be a jumping, noise-making time when we all get to heaven, but we ain't there yet. When we sing the song of Moses and the Lamb, and we shout for joy, angels won't know what to do with themselves. Say, so we can't sing like that. Because angels don't know the joy that our salvation brings. But until then, let's keep this in memory. Jesus is waiting. He's waiting to drink of the fruit of the grape. He says, I'm not going to touch this again until my bride arrives. He's waiting. So if, if, if Jesus can wait patiently, I know he, there's divine anticipation. Hello, somebody. And we are anticipating too. But while the time tarries, let us look forward as we look back on what he has done for us.
In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 14 through 20, we see Luke's description of what happened and the events that happened in the upper room during the Lord's Supper. And these are his words and the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, starting with verse 14. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Heads, uh, we'll pray. Dear loving, gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for doing for us what we could not do for our sinful selves, Lord. Thank you for your sacrifice, Lord. Thank you for this ordinance, Lord, of remembrance, of reminding us of what you've done for us, Lord, of your humility, Lord, uh, and your love for us, Lord. Lord, we look forward to when we can drink of this vine new with you in your Father's kingdom, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to work on our hearts, Lord, that we'll be ready for you when you come back for us, Lord. This is my prayer in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen.
When life throws you curves, curveballs, by the grace of God, as he leads, we have to adjust. And not wanting anyone who wanted to participate to be left out, as we have the past few times, we've offered for those who would like to partake uh, at home because of the pandemic uh, to come and pick up emblems. And nine sets of emblems were served yesterday, and they're watching online now waiting for us to partake together in this prayer experience. Uh, those who are able to wash have done that because you wash yourself in preparation to receive that which Jesus has, has done. And so you saw us breaking the bread, symbolic of his body being broken for us. Unfortunately, some believe that this becomes the actual body of Jesus, but it doesn't. It's a symbol. And uh, this symbol is, is unleavened, as it was then, and so it is today, symbolizing that he himself had no sin. This was prepared in a rush as the children of Israel were leaving Egypt. They didn't have any time for fancy preparation. So they took that unleavened bread and they ate it. And they went with it. And we're looking forward to leaving this Egypt, heading to the heavenly Canaan. The blood that was spilt, that was uh, spread on the doorpost, symbolized the blood of Jesus that was spilled for us. And so we partake. This is not, this does not become blood. Praise the Lord. But this is a symbol of the unfermented fresh grape juice. This is blood that was sinless. And so, in a moment of silence, we may partake of these emblems in remembrance of our Lord and Savior. is a beautiful song that, like Abraham, we ask God to lead us day by day. This is a part of our testimony. The song 482 is actually a prayer, but it's also a testimony. And we will sing this song, Father, Lead Me Day by Day, as part of our commitment to him. And then, as we're singing, you might recall some things that maybe you would like to share. It could be a word of praise. That's what uh, this section of the service is for. We'll take those for a couple of minutes, and then we'll have our final prayer. So our hymn of commitment, 482, we'll take that now at this time. You may remain seated. singing.
testimonies that you'd like to share this time. What has God done for you, uh, or the goodness and grace, since, since 2021 started? We're almost through, believe it or not, but uh, David will be on this side. Miguel will have a mic on this side. Just raise your hand if you'd like to share something at this time, or if anybody else up here wants to start first, that's fine too. Yeah. All right. Anybody? Go right ahead. Yeah. Yes, I just want to uh, thank the Lord and praise His name for how I've seen Him in this past year, as the pastor mentioned, uh, seems like it's gone by in such a hurry. But you know, God is continually leading His people here in Beaver Creek, and I just want to thank the Lord uh, for the work that's being done. And uh, we see that being fulfilled in uh, the people we're coming in contact with through the various means through outreach and uh, ministering to the needs of others in our community. And uh, I just want to thank our congregation and thank the Lord, the supreme giver of all things, that he has blessed us in so many ways. And, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've been in this church a long time, and uh, I've seen how God has, has moved in very wonderful and uh, powerful ways. And, um, you know, I, I'm just so thankful that we are a praying church. I just want to say that. Because it's only through prayer that we get the power from heaven that God has promised to give us. If we try to do things on our own, then we're going to fail miserably. But yet, when we place it in God's hands, which we have done over and over again, we've seen how God has answered those prayers and blessed us as a church and individually in our own personal lives. I just want to make that testimony. Amen. Amen. Somebody else. All right, there's a hand in the back on the right side here. Out of the mouth of babes. I would like to um, praise for my baby brother, Caleb. Amen. 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 Praising the Lord for baby brother, Caleb, whom that means brave. All right. Yes. Anybody else? Testimony or a praise? There's one here. I want to thank the Lord for my spirit life. I was very sick. I had at least two surgeries this year. And God has been good to me. Amen. And I know some of you were praying for me, so I want to say thank you. Amen. Thank Amen. you very much. Amen. Uh, so you heard directly from Sister Mahabi. There was one time when I sent out a maybe update about praying for, for, a, for a dear friend. And uh, she has shared just now that you were praying for her. Now you know who one of those people were. There have been other anonymous ones, but now you know. Uh, Sister Linda, it's so nice to have you 
and my dear friend, Dr. Melissa. Anybody else would like to share praise or a testimony, or if you still have a prayer request? Oh, our elder here. Uh, I would uh, like to share a praise. Um, and I know I'm probably not, it's not uh, much different than anybody else. Uh, where you have a friend or family member that you've sent intercessory prayer for because they've uh, uh, maybe shunned uh, Jesus' call. Um, recently, I've, I've had a, a family member that have lost several friends, uh, you know, just based on lifestyle, what have we. And we've had several family members praying for that individual. But praise God, we've seen seen some change. That's to let you know that there's power in prayer. We've seen a change. A person. Uh, reaching out for, for God and, and uh, just being an individual that we never thought we'd see that. So that is proof that we can never write somebody off. That's God right. is good. <laughs> Amen. If you write anybody off, that would be wrong. Have mercy. All right. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? There's, yes, uh, one here, one here. I'd just Thompson. like to request for a prayer for a friend. He lost his wife, and he's uh, in uh, depression, so he's uh, having a hard time. Dom. All right. All right. Let's remember. I just want to give God thanks for his mercy, his grace, his provision. He is just always all right all the time. And I just want to verbalize publicly how thankful and grateful I am to God for everything. He knows it all. Amen, 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 all the time. And you, you heard from her some time ago as the mic comes over here uh, a few months ago when, she, uh, when the church was praying for her through her surgery. And uh, she still said the same thing. God is good all the time. And so we praise the Lord uh, with her. Yes. And I just want to praise God I didn't get any um, influenza this year. Because last year I got influenza, B, influenza A, put me in the intensive care. Oh, yes, that's right. I remember. Then I got uh, Legionnaire's disease that summer, and it was a lousy year. So hopefully the next three months I'll get through this one without getting anything. So Yes, yes. Thank you for sharing that. Sometimes you don't, you don't remember. I remember us visiting with you there uh, in the hospital a, a few times, and uh, thank God for his mercy and his grace. Uh, anybody else? I take one more before we have our prayer of commitment. Anybody else? All right. So I'll I'll, I'll round this out by thanking God for uh, again using our church family. Um, I want to ask you to continue to pray for a young man who is struggling. Uh, with some very intense challenges, uh, suicidal thoughts. Um, he was recently involved in a car accident. Uh, well, he wasn't driving, he was standing on the sidewalk and a car hit him and the driver took off. Uh, and he, uh, his back was broken in two places. Um, a young man in high school. I pray for his mother and I thank God for his providence in giving us the opportunity to pray with her back at the, at the popcorn festival. And God has made that connection so that, because you see, God saw the challenges that would have taken place. He sees the challenges in this life. And he finds a way to make a connection so that someone can realize there's still hope. Others have been through worse, but connected with God, they have made it through. And I believe it can be the same for this young man. So even though I will leave his name off the record, please pray for him. God knows his name. And pray for the other individuals uh, who have been recently connected with our church um, and who have been receiving uh, drop-offs and studies. And by the grace of God, may those uh, seed find fruit. May they grow by the grace of God. And so at this time, I will ask you if, if you would bow your heads with me as we have this prayer of commitment to God. Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to call you our Father. You are a Father to the fatherless. 
many who've had a bad experience on this side of the Jordan, with those who call themselves fathers. Lord, we know you're not like that. Your word says, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. And bowing here right now are your children. Watching online, Father, are your children. Those who will watch a delayed broadcast of this service are your children. And so may we sense, Lord, your Holy Spirit. He who you've sent to be the representative of Jesus Christ, the one who seeks to take residence in this body temple. I pray, Lord, that our hearts will be open to receiving him. You've heard our testimonies, and we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, even in the difficulties. In everything, Lord, we're learning to give you thanks. We're not thanking you for the pain or the challenges because we know that adversity is never your will for us. But in spite of the pain, in spite of the challenges, we give you thanks because we have hope. Hope in the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hope in a world where there will be no more pain, where there will be no more suffering. There will be no more death. Help our our, our minds, our eyes to, to be fixed on that time, on that place. Lord, in a very special way, we ask for a prayer for a dear friend that was mentioned just now, recently lost his wife, and he has sunken into depression. Lord, no one can take her place but you. You are the one that can fill every void in every heart. And so, Lord, as we intercede for him, Lord, we ask that you'll come divinely near to him and warm his heart with your presence, Lord. Father, we know that this road can be rough, so please walk with him, hold his hands. Yea, Lord, even lift him up, we pray. Father, you've heard the other prayer requests that were mentioned earlier today, and I also pray for the unnamed young man. Please, Father, you know his name. You've given us the privilege of visiting with him and his mother, but Father, they need your presence all the time. Please, Father, relieve him of those troubling thoughts and may his heart be turned to you. Now, Lord, we thank you for taking the wages of the broken covenant, the covenant that we could not keep, and for giving us all the promises, though we were not worthy. But, Lord, you, you, you see your reflection in us because we were made in your image and you died for all your creation. So, Father, we praise you and we thank you we're looking forward to the time when we're going to sit around that welcome table. We're going to sing the songs of Moses and the Lamb. We're going to eat of the food of heaven. Help us, Lord, to be ready for that time. Help us, Lord, to help others to get ready. And may we, Father, be joined together with you, never, ever more to be apart. And help us sing that song of redeemed. Help us, Lord, to proclaim it. We're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 And so let us sing our closing song, Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim It. Let's stand and let's sing this song with our hearts. Let's sing this song with gusto in our voices as we sing these three stanzas. Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim It. Three, three, eight. <laughs> Oh, 
you as you go throughout your week. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he be merciful unto you and give you peace. Peace in your heart and peace in your homes, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you live in a qualified... zip code, you may be eligible to receive USA-made solar panels for no cost at any